Stories are how we learn best. We are wired for story. We're living in the ultimate story. We live in a big story. Everything is about story. People and their attention span, it's getting shorter and shorter. You've got to capture them. And I think if you provide content where people can get the idea, digest it and act on it, you will create powerful content. You have 26 books. Do you wait for inspiration to hit you or do you have any habits or routines so that there's a level of consistency in you coming up with strong ideas? So how do you create incredible, engaging content? What are some of the insider secrets and content creation strategies when it comes to the routines, the habits, and even the frameworks for consistently putting out content that people love? Well, I'm excited because on today's episode of the Think Media Podcast, my guest is John Gordon. Now, if you've Never met John before. He is a best selling author of 26 different books. His book, The Energy Bus, has sold over 2 million copies. He's been featured everywhere CNN, CNBC, the Today Show. He's worked with Southwest Airlines and the Miami Heat and all kinds of different Fortune 500 companies who benefited from his principles as an expert in communications and leadership and mindset and positivity and in so many other topics. We're going to really be learning from him today about how we could power up the content we are creating right now on YouTube, across platforms, and maybe someday you dream of writing a book or packaging what you know into some type of a program. John is the expert, and we're going to learn his secrets today. John, welcome to the show. Sean, great to be with you. So uh, give us a little backstory if people are just meeting you. You're incredibly prolific. How did this whole thing get started with you publishing what you know, posting books, publishing books, and all of uh, your career, what it's been up to today? You know, Hearing you talk, it's interesting because you're going from the lens of people are doing videos and then one day maybe you'll write a book. For me, it was about writing and sharing what I wrote and now I'm moving more towards videos and the video world. And so I always saw myself as a, a writer first and a speaker second. But I have to say, I didn't even know I was a writer until it hit me when I was asked, what am I born to do? Why am I here? What happened was I was really struggling with fear, stress, anxiety. I lost my job during the dot-com crash all the way back in 2001. How will I pay the bills? How will I support my family? Two little kids, a wife, a mortgage, and I was crumbling from the inside out. And I was blaming my wife, Catherine, for why my life was falling apart. And I was blaming her for why I wasn't realizing my dreams. She had enough of my negativity. And she said, you know what? I love you, but I'm not going to spend my life with someone who makes me so miserable. You need to change. And that began this journey of, of wanting to be a more positive person. So I remember saying, what am I born to do? Why am I here? And why am I so miserable? I realized I wasn't living my purpose. I asked what that was. And writing and speaking came to me in that moment. I'll never forget. I want to be a writer and speaker. I'm going to start doing this work to make an impact. So it started with, I want to add value. But what will I write and speak about? Well, I want to be more positive. So I started to research all the ways that I could be more positive. So think about that. I'm curious. I want to be more positive. I started reading about positive psychology. This was during the emerging field of positive psychology, so no one really heard much about it. It was new. It was exciting. It wasn't developed as a field, but I was taking some of the ideas and I was practicing them, seeing results. So then I started a weekly positive tip, and every week I would share a positive tip. Why? To add value, to share what I was doing, to make an impact. Because, Sean, I realized I was, I was miserable when I focused on myself and that's part of why I was crumbling in so many ways because I was trying to be a success. And then I realized, no, it's about making a difference, adding value, serving others, making an impact. And once that became my lens and my focus, that's when I said, how can I add value? So I was one of the first constant contact email people sending stuff out way back in 2002, started my weekly positive tip, five subscribers, my mother, my brother, best friend from college, they were getting that newsletter whether they liked it or not. But you know what? People started sharing it. I would meet people, get their email, add them to the list, and then send them next week's newsletter. So I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just doing it, finding a way to collect emails and then send them my work. And people started reading it, sharing it, 
Next thing you know, someone came along and said, hey, I love your newsletter. You should write a book. And that began the process and the journey of going, okay, now I'm going to think about writing a book. And that began my career in terms of of being a writer first. And then I, I was told that if I wanted to write books, I needed to speak because no one's going to want to read your book if they don't see you speak. And it's hard to get your work out there. And no one's going to publish a book unless you're speaking as well. So I was forced to actually go speak, even though I was terrified to do so. Man, it's so powerful hearing your story. And, you know, I took away three C's of tips of content creation just in the opening here. You know, number one, you were talking about being curious. I think that if we are lacking inspiration in our content creation, if we stay curious, we're reading, we're studying. And then number two, you are consistent and you committed to this weekly positive tip. And I'm sure in the process of doing that, it held you accountable, made you com- accountable to readers, even though it started small, you were consistent. Number three, you then began to build a community, but focused on a community. You said, how can I add value to others as opposed to thinking about yourself? What's in it for the viewer? What's in it for the reader? And then bonus tip, constant contact, which would be why it's so important to build an email list. And I think for every YouTube creator, a lot of times they don't think about that. But, you know, of course, you can use other things like AWeber or all these different softwares. Constant contact is one of them. But to me, How are you going to capture the audience that engages with your work even beyond subscribers? And then eventually getting on uh, stages, which I think one of the opportunities for everybody, you know, listening to this today is the world's kind of changed. You no longer have to necessarily travel or get on a plane to get on a stage because you could get on a podcast like this or you could build your own platform and get on YouTube. And that could be a great way to get the message out about your books and your content. But, you know, as we are um, jumping into this, why do you use social media and video now? Yeah. So for me, if I, if I go backwards, if I go backwards in the past, it was about putting out content, trying to add value, trying to write and share what I was doing and what I was thinking. I had no idea that that newsletter would be the most valuable thing I ever did from a business standpoint. I was just trying to add value. And yet, as people shared it, I then got invited to speak. And now what I realize is most of my ideas for books came from a newsletter I wrote or an idea I wrote. You went back to being consistent. I was being consistent and writing every week that newsletter. Guess what? It's 2023. I started that in 2002. I'm still doing the newsletter every single week. And we have a lot more subscribers, a few hundred thousand, like four or 500,000 now. People say I should be in the million. I probably should. I didn't focus enough on just driving, driving, driving the newsletter. We're actually doing that now. But the good news is it's very organic. Like those who are engaged with my newsletter are very loyal. They buy the books. They're always consuming the content. They come to our leadership trainings now. It's led to everything that I do. And here's the thing. When you do write a book or you do have a product, most people will buy from a direct email more than they will off of social media. So I'm sure you have research on that and you understand that, right, Sean? Like direct email is still the king in terms of getting a response. And this newsletter list of engaged people is, is key. But why am I moving towards social media and media now? For me, it's just another channel. It's another way to to reach people, to add value, to provide content, to expand the audience, to have more influence and reach more people. I wish I had a bigger YouTube presence. I don't. It's something I need to invest more in. I need to listen to you more. I have your book right here, actually. So I need to do more of that. But we are moving in that direction. I've been investing a lot in Instagram and Twitter has always been a, a big following of mine. And to me, it's just what medium can I use to reach more people to have more impact? But still, even now, I'm still more than ever now, as I'm sending stuff out, I'm also saying sign up for my free newsletter or providing a lead gen that will get people to then be engaged with my newsletter. So now I continue to build that community because that's the greatest thing we can do as we move forward. So I love media. I'm getting better at it, especially from the video portion. I've done TV over the years a lot. And I know it's a, it's a powerful way to, 
to, to reach people and to impact people and to move people. But as a writer, I know that my greatest gift is in the books that I can actually put in someone's hand or they can buy and they can then read and it can impact their life. So I see media as a way to connect with people so that they'll read the book. Because so often the talk alone doesn't do it, but when you read something, it becomes something you internalize and then it becomes a part of you. I am who I am in so many ways because of the books that I've read and the people I've met along the way. And talks are motivational. Talks are great. You can hear a talk. It can, it can impact your life. But I think more people get impacted by the books they read. So powerful and kind of shifting into content creation itself. And I do think it's okay to maybe pull out a little abstractly, whether it's going to be a video, whether it's going to be a book. Of course, there's something much more profound and researched and deep about putting a book out there. But when we distill it down, whether it's metaphors, analogies, frameworks, you've been so prolific in coming up with strong content. And everybody listening to this wants to stand out from the crowd. They want unique ideas. They want to come up with something strong. They want to um, illustrate points with story. What are some of your tips especially having written 26 books. You've got a brand new book as well, The One Truth, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But you've written, you've come up with these powerful and poignant illustrations. I think the Coffee Bean book is one of my favorite books. And, and once, once I started to think about that illustration, I can never think about coffee the same, let alone my attitude the same um, and things like that. So what are some of your tips for somebody that wants to have more powerful ideas, come up with you know stronger content overall. I want to invite you guys to our YouTube 1K challenge. You can join this challenge for free as we show you how to grow your first 1,000 subscribers and make your first $1,000 on YouTube. We've had countless people join us during this 1K challenge who are now at 1,000 subscribers and past 1,000 subscribers making money on YouTube. And you could be the next person. If you just go to tube1kchallenge.com, you can sign up for the very next challenge and we can't wait to see you guys there. We've heard the term that a picture is worth a thousand words and an analogy is worth a thousand pictures. And when you give an analogy, it helps people understand and make sense of it and then understand how they can implement it. Stories are how we learn best. We are wired for story. We're living in the ultimate story. We live in a big story. Everything is about story. This is why media creation is so important. We're telling a story through video. Or you're telling a story through a book. You're telling a story through a podcast. Whatever it may be, we're all telling stories. We learn best through stories. And also when I tell people about speaking, I always say, start with the principle. Share the principle. What's the story that brings the principle to life? And then how can they apply it? How can the audience apply it? And then make it applicable to them. So when I'm speaking to a different audience or I'm doing a video, if I'm speaking to athletes, it's going to be a different application than if I speak to a company. But the story can be the same and the principle is the same, but how it applies to them is different. And so that's one of the ways that I teach people how to bring principles to life, share the stories and apply it. But also as we're you know creating content, I think we're ultimately trying to convey, convince, share sell, but we always do it through story and we always remember the most through story. And what's the universal experience? How does it apply to the audience? How can they connect with what you're saying? And what does it mean to them in their life? If it's just about your life and you tell a great story about you, that doesn't do a whole lot unless they could actually see themselves in the story and realize how they could actually apply what they're learning from the story. And so if I think about, I'm a, I'm a person of faith, I think about the Bible, for instance, it's been around for thousands of years and it's a series of stories that teach lessons and convey spirit and messages and principles. And thousands of years later, people are still able to live their lives by the truths that are shared. But I think we have that power and the opportunity every day to actually do that with fresh new content and bring to life principles in a new and fresh way. It reminds me of something that even Jesus said, where uh, describing him in the New Testament, it was saying he often, or the majority of times, spoke in parables right, uh, and illustrations of truth. And so your framework is, what's the principle? And I think this could be applied, of course, in some videos, 
in some content, you may want to teach three, four, five, ten things. That may be too many. A lot of times there's the opportunity of maybe one video, one principle, one video, one big idea, one video, one thing that you want the viewer to, to learn. So you're saying principle, then what's the story that illustrates that? I think that's a big opportunity for us. Somebody said once that facts tell, but stories sell. And this idea of when you just hear the principle, you hear the information, you're like, all right, I think I get it. Now the story brings it to life. But then that application number three is so powerful because how does it actually apply to the viewer, the audience? We always say the creator who understands the viewer best wins. And you really brought clarity there when you said, if you're talking to athletes, it's going to be different if you're talking to CEOs or somebody in a company. And so just thinking about, man, who's watching or who am I trying to reach? And when you begin to articulate with empathy, the contextualization of that principle to the single mom with a couple of kids trying to do a side hustle versus the professional on a commute that is on their way to a corporate job, man, it's so powerful on how we could really level up our content. In your process, how do you come up with a brand new big idea? You have 26 books. Do you wait for inspiration to hit you or do you have any habits or routines so that there's a level of consistency in you coming up with strong ideas? So Sean, it's actually 28 books. So now, so not 26, yeah. it's 28. The updated bio. I got you. 28 and, and counting. Where, I got where, updated where? bio. Yeah. My friends always joke, Hey, we just had a conversation with John. He just wrote another book. <laughs> I basically think in terms of books. I think in terms of that would be a great book. That would be a great topic. When I talk to someone, we have a conversation. I'm like, you should write a book about this, this, and this. And they're like, oh, what a great idea. I was with Tim Tebow the other day. And I'm like, Tim, that is a book right there. Like I saw it so clearly that should be a book. Some people take me up on it and say, you're right, I'll do it. Other people say, yeah, yeah, maybe. So I think in terms of that. So as I'm living my life, I have my eyes open. I have my ears open and I'm basically tuning in and I'm always open to what is being said, what I'm hearing. And I get these hits. I get these just knowings that, oh, that's a book. When I wrote the coffee bean with Damon West, Dabo Sweeney was telling me about it at Clemson. Damon had just spoke to Clemson about the coffee bean. Dabo was reenacting Damon's talk, which is very funny that he was doing that for me. And as I'm listening, I said, that's a book. I had the visual of it and the vision right away. And I knew what it should be. So I basically am open, I'm listening, I'm hearing, I'm curious, and I'm always thinking, oh, that's a great analogy. Oh, that's a, that's a great metaphor. Oh, that's a great illustration. I should write that. I should share that. And when it hits me and I can't let go of it, when it's something that's seeping into my soul and it just won't leave me alone, I know I'm supposed to write that book. When I start talking about it and start sharing it with others, and then I see how those principles and those lessons start to impact people. I'm like, okay, this needs to be a book. And now I'm doing the same with videos as I'm living life and I, I hear a phrase or a thought or I, I think about what someone needs to hear about a certain topic. That is now something that I'll, I'll write down. I'm now keeping a list of, of various ideas. I think people should have a notebook or on their phone where they're keeping ideas of inspiration and things they want to talk about. If you don't write it down, when it comes, so often we forget and it's gone and you'll never get it back. So when the inspiration hits, you got to write it down and you have to be open and willing to what's coming your way. We are conduits. We are conductors. I truly believe that there's a creative force in this world. And when you connect to it and you're open to it, you become like the antenna. You become the conductor that actually it moves through. And then from there, it's coming to you and through you for you to share with others. What's coming to you? What are you open to? What's your gift? What do you love talking about? What energizes you? What can you share that, that other people can't share that will impact people? What can you talk about that other people can't talk about in the way that you do? What's unique about you? And as you start being open to that, and you start looking for that inspiration and being open to it. And believe that if you're open to it, it will be found. A lot of people say, well, I'm not creative. No, you're just not tuning into creative thoughts. You're not just being open to it. We're all creative. We all, we, as my friend Erwin McManus says, we were imagined to imagine, we were created to create. And we are meant to, to be creative. And when we are, that's when we unleash 
the genius we're meant to share in this world. And I think people need to say, I'm open, I'm willing, okay. And then just find what inspires you, encourages you. What does the world need? How can you serve the world? And how can you, in your own unique way, serve it to others? And I think that's something I, I do often. It's like I walk every day pretty much. And I find that my daily walks, going back to consistency, daily walks every day of gratitude and then prayer is where all the ideas for my books have ultimately come from. Most people get their ideas in the shower. Mine are on these ideas or on these walks where the ideas just come. And I'm like, boom, I write it down. And when the, when more and more of the book starts to unfold or more and more of the ideas start to come, then I realize that's it. But you nailed it earlier. A lot of people, when they start writing a book, they'll write five books in one. They try to put everything into one book. No, just write one book, one core message. When you're doing a video, as you said, one core message. People and their attention span, it's getting shorter and shorter. You've got to capture them. You've got to have a, have a big idea. You could have something they can take away from that. And I think if you provide content where people can get the idea, digest it, and act on it, you will create powerful content. Rather than saying, this video is going to be 15 minutes long, it's going to be all these ideas. I think today, the more we can actually give people one idea, the better. And that's why I say, okay, that's not another, that's not, that's not this book. That's, you know, two books from now. The next book is the one I'm going to write about this. And I keep my books very focused and with core messages. People read it, then they read the other because it's digestible. It's something they can read. It's applicable and they see the impact in their life. And I'm not putting too much into one book. So many rich insights there that we can apply to the content we're creating. I want to shift to kind of the second part of our conversation in a second, especially with you being an expert on positive psychology and knowing that a lot of us are dealing with all kinds of challenges and it's it's hard to stay positive and stay consistent and overcome discouragement. But I do want to ask you a question for everybody listening. A lot of our community is either they're, they're creators on YouTube, so they're trying to make a living as a content creator, which is a whole movement right now, the creator economy and the fact we can turn our passion into profit. And then there's many entrepreneurs leveraging YouTube for leads, customers, and sales um, and understanding the power of building their personal brand on YouTube. And so I'm curious, as an author that has been incredibly successful speaking right now into 2023, do you think it's an opportunity? And would you recommend that the listeners to the Think Media podcast consider writing a book? Do you think that would be a worthwhile investment of their time and energy in a world where it would seem that like, let's do a podcast, let's do a video. Any any thoughts for the entrepreneur, for the content creator on on should they consider writing a book? I believe the book today is basically your business card of, of yesteryear. So when you have a book, that is your business card. You hand it to someone, it gives you a position of authority. It gives you a, a position of, of, of excellence. It gives you a position of, of someone who has knowledge and wisdom on a particular subject. And it elevates you and your stand. Now, videos are awesome. YouTube is amazing. People have bigger brands than me that are on YouTube. And yet I get paid $75,000 a talk because I wrote books and because I'm seen as a thought leader and an expert in my field. And so you could write a book that makes you an expert and that elevates what you can command as a speaker, as a consultant, just as someone who is, a, again, a position of, of authority. So I think that's why a book is is really important and helpful to do that. It, it separates you. It causes you to stand out. And to this day, for some reason, there's something about the written book. There's something about holding a book that says, here are my thoughts, here are my ideas. I put them into this, this package that you can now take with you. And then when you read that book or someone else reads it 10 years from now, 15 years from now, it's like a time machine. You're reading that book that was written, literally the energy bus was written in 2006. It comes out in 2007, the book comes out. Where 2023, Wyndham Clark read the energy bus, said it turned around his mindset, helped him with his positivity, and he just won a PGA Tour event. He won $3.6 million. 
He read a book that I wrote in 2006 and it helped him today with his life, with his career as a pro golfer because he was struggling with negativity. And as a result of that, he's now thriving. That's the cool thing about books is that again, it's, it's, it's timeless and you're writing words from where you are now, your spirit now, and you're putting them on paper and someone can read them at any time. So that's why I think people should definitely consider writing a book. And I always say, pick the book and write the book first. That if you died, if you died this year, what would you want to leave behind? What's a burning desire, a passionate message that you just have to share that you want to leave behind if you should go? And that should be your first book. And then you live this year, you want to write another one? Okay, what's that that next book? But maybe you don't want to write another one. Maybe you just write one and that's the one that you're meant to write. And I believe we all really do have a book within us that we're meant to write. And you just have to find out what that book is for you. So I believe you do your videos, you do your content, and then you have a book that sort of allows you to actually take your thoughts into a printed form that allows people to read them anywhere they go. And it's only going to just elevate your brand. John Gordon is the author of 28 books, including 12 bestsellers and five children's books. His brand new book, The One Truth, is uh, either coming soon or it's out now. And of course, check out all his social media platforms and his links in the show notes of this episode. But we are doing this podcast. It's two parts. So I want to make sure you're subscribed, rate and review this wherever you are and listen to part two where he is going to tackle destroying negativity and bringing a whole nother level of positivity, especially if you feel like you're in a slump or slow growth or experiencing some discouragement right now with the growth of your business or your YouTube channel.